All right, everyone, welcome back to Work Life Harmony. I have an amazing guest here today. I feel honored that I was able to get her on the show. Um, her name is Perry Kirsch. I'm going to let her introduce herself in just a minute. Um, but as you know, you know, everything I like to share tips and tricks on is all around time management, organization, and productivity. And when I share tips around organization, I'm, I'm mostly talking about our calendar and those types of things. And I realize there's a whole other world out there that I get questions on all the time. So I decided what better place to go than to go get a professional organizer. So Perry, welcome to the show. Tell everyone about yourself and then we will jump in and get started. Sure thing. Thank you so much for having me, Megan. I really appreciate it. Um, so I have a business called Neat Freak Professional Organizing. I am based in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, but I work all over the triangle. And in these current times, I also work virtually with clients. So um, can can help people even over their computer screen organize both their space and their time. Um, I work with students, individuals, families, and small business owners. And I've been doing this work since 2005. So um, have pretty much, I can like, honestly say I've seen it all. Um, I have, you know, I, there's not a space that I won't organize for the most part. And um, yeah, I, I still love my work. I love the engagement with my clients. I love helping people find really customizable solutions that are gonna work for them. There's not some one size fits all solution for organizing a space. And so I really love to work with my clients to figure out what's going to, you know, work with their, their own um, ways of thinking, their ways of living into their space, the way their family may engage or their, you know, how they may work in their workplace and really helping them find those customized solutions. I love that because I think, so many times, you know, I mean, I'm, I love HGTV just like anybody else, but our, there are times where I'll, I'll see someone showing the one way mm -hmm. to either manage time or to organize a specific space. And I love that you recognize there isn't a one size fits all when it comes to that. There may be overarching systems and principles that apply, yeah. but helping people find a way, even when I just teach basic email management, I'm like, no, there's a lot of good ways, more than one. I'll share how I do it, but that isn't right for everybody because your brain works different, your lifestyle is different. So I love that you bring that, that personalization in for people, so important. I think it's just really key to helping people build that sort of lasting organizational structure that's going to be maintainable for them, because I could go into many houses and make them look pretty decent, um, maybe even really lovely. But if six months from now, you can't tell that I was there, then that's not a solution that really is going to work for you. Oh, fantastic. So today we were going to have, I know with the pandemic, the uptick of everybody wanting to beautify their space, organize their space. Like we've been in this space for a long time. <laughs> we start looking around and going, I'd like to redo that. I'd like to redo that. Um, and I know a lot of my clients are, are doing that and they're like, but it looks so overwhelming. Where do I even start? So would love for you to share some tips on like, all right, I'm looking around my house where where is a great place for people to get started when they're looking at just wanting to get more organized, more streamlined with their, their stuff and their space? Sure. Well, it's so interesting. You know, I feel like the, the sort of the collision of both the pandemic, but also it being the new year, you know, there's just, mm, yeah, people have all these goals. I, I said the other day to a client, I was like, I don't think there's ever been so much pressure on a year to be better <laughs> because the bar was so low from last year. So people have really lofty goals for their New Year's resolutions this year. Um, so, and I think naturally organization always tops those lists for people. So, you know, it is probably the number one reason people call me is because they, you know, they say, I, you know, I want to get organized this year. I want to figure this out. I want to have better systems in place so I can manage my time better or feel happier in my home but they feel completely overwhelmed. And what naturally happens when we feel overwhelmed is we'll procrastinate because we think that there's just one perfect way to do something. So we'll put it off because it just feels unmanageable, untenable. They don't know where to start. Um, and so they just walk away from it or, or continue to kick that can down the road. And what I really do believe is that there's not just one right answer to that. Um, it, it's gonna differ for every person. So. The, the most important part is just get started. 
And you can do that in a lot of different ways. Um, sometimes it's just setting a timer for five minutes and walking up to that junk drawer that drives you crazy every day where the pens are out of control and you can't even open the drawer because there's so much stuff in there and saying, all right, I'm in five minutes here. And when the timer goes off after five minutes, walk away from it. Just say, okay, I got started. I just, you know, kind of broke the seal there and I'm, I'm, I'm making little baby steps towards achieving my goal. So I don't have to carve out an entire weekend and say it's the whole room or nothing. Exactly. And I think that is, that's another reason that people sometimes quit is they'll get into it. And then they're just like, oh, there's so much more stuff in here than I realize. I just can't do all of this. I'm never going to be able to get it right. So I'm just not going to try. So, you know, baby steps, that's one way to sort of tackle the, the beast of, of getting organized. Um, some other solutions would be to really just think about the space that might create the most, you know, give you the most bang for your buck. For some people, it might be a public space. Um, some people really get motivated by that sort of external feedback that they might get from organizing a space. Believe it or not, one day we'll have people over again and people will come into our homes. So it might be that that's a space that feels really good for you is to have a place where other people are going to notice and be like, wow, you've really done a great job here. This looks amazing. It feels so warm and inviting when I walk into your living room, something like that. Um, for others, it might be a more personal space. If a client is trying to organize their whole home, a, a lot of times I'll start with their master bedroom because it's the last thing you see when you go to bed at night, first thing you see when you wake up in the morning. And I think it has such an impact on how we feel about our space and also how we feel about ourselves. Um, it's, it's sort of a space that I think shows that we care for ourselves. We nurture ourselves. We want to create an environment that allows us to rest and sleep and, you know, be in our own place. So sometimes a, a master bedroom can be a, a really great place to start as well. I love that. And it's funny, I hadn't put two and two together till I heard you say that. Um, and I know, you know, I get teased a lot about my love of shoes. Um, I, I have many, but I, as I say to everyone, but my foot's been the same size for for decades, like that's why. Yeah. But when we, you know, recently did our our remake on the Lover Listed show with our house, one of the really important things for me was the master closet. Mm -hmm. And you know, I, I saw some lashback on social media of people talking about, you know, the the shallow lady that just wanted a bigger closet or whatever. But for me, like my day starts with, I get up, I do my morning routine, whatever I exercise and I go in and I get cleaned up and ready for the day before my family's awake. And when I walk into that master closet now and how it's so beautifully organized and I can see everything, that to me is a mindset for the day. And I feel like I show up different. Like I want to be, I'm going to show up as the person that has the really organized closet as opposed to before it was like, you could barely open the door because it was so jammed full of stuff. And it was just like, oh God, just grab something out and, and put it on. But I hadn't really put that connection of when you're talking about the master bedroom, you know, that's, that's kind of my first place I start my day and it makes a big difference. Sure. And, you know, thinking about clothes and even the relationship to time, which you're so familiar with, you know, if we walk into our closet every day and we're just like, oh, you know, I've got it. I can't figure out what I want to wear. Is this clean? Is this dirty? Like what goes with this? Do I put together this outfit? I need to accessorize this. You know, all of that costs us time as well. So that organizational system and having that, you know, clarity when you walk in there and you can see everything that you have and you know that those clothes reflect who you truly are and you feel good in them. I always, you know, I tell my clients all the time, like keep the things that make you feel like a rock star. Why do you want to keep things that are going to make you feel not great about yourself? And that's how you're going to present yourself to the world. So I, I think there, there's deeper stuff going on there than just like shallow stuff about shoes. I mean, right. I really think it's a reflection of who we are, how we honor ourselves, how we honor our time. And, you know, I think that that's, that's an important place to start. Uh, so good. Now, right now, so many people, you know, I've, I've worked from home for gosh, going on 12, 13 years. So I, I started working from home before my daughter was born. I was still, you know, full-time corporate. Uh, but my offices were based first time I started working from home. I was working for a company based in Texas and I'm living here in North Carolina. So I was either at home or on the road uh, for work. So I've been in this work from home space for a long time. 
So when the pandemic hit, that that did not completely, you know, uproot everything about now it did when my daughter was home with me uh, for school. But for so many people, working from home is new, especially with everybody at home together. Now you've got multiple kids trying to do school from home, both spouses. What are some tips you can share for getting kind of a, an organized workspace, both when you do have a dedicated office, which, you know, for years I didn't, now I do, versus you don't. And so now you've got to find a way to create a space that doesn't just completely turn your house upside down. Sure. And, you know, I think this will differ for every person based on your space and your layout and your Wi-Fi signal and all kinds of things. <laughs> but, you know, I do think for a lot of people who were sort of thrown for a loop and all of a sudden found themselves working from home 10 months ago, you might have set up a workspace kind of in a triage mode of like, okay, I just need a surface and I need a power cord and I need a lamp and that's it. And I think 10 months in, a lot of people are starting to look at this differently. Like this might last like beyond the pandemic. I think a lot of businesses are, are looking at this right. as a way that is maybe we could make it more sustainable for people to be able to continue working from home and have a little more flexibility. So I think now is the perfect time to really assess that original place you set up and say, is this still working for me? You know, is my work surface adequate? Um, is my chair comfortable for me to be That's in? That's a big one. Front? You know, really just like the ergonomics of your setup. Is, is that really working for you? Um, lighting is really important. I think when you're sitting there trying to be productive for eight or 10 hours a day in a workspace, you need to make sure you have adequate lighting, that you're you know, not straining to see your computer. And so I think those things are important. And just kind of looking at that and saying, is the way that I set this system up back in March of 2020 still a really good system for me? And then looking around your space and saying, are there other options that I might have? Or maybe just going out and treating yourself to a new chair would be all that, all that you need to do at this point to make it ideal. Um, so I, I think those types of factors are, are important to, to figure out. Um, you know, there's so many other pieces that, that factor in too, though, of just like how we're using our time and it, how our home life and work life are just kind of all blending and morphing together at this point. Um, you know, and it could just be as simple as, are you reminding yourself during the day to get up and stretch and take a walk and drink some water and eat an actual meal? Um, are you setting really clear boundaries, both with work and with your family, so that you know you've got these blocks of time where you can be really productive, but you can also walk away from that. You can not be just like, oh my gosh, I live and work at my office all the time and I, I'm unable to turn that off. So what are your strategies for being able to sort of walk away from that as well, I think is really important. But, um, you know, organizationally, I think looking at, again, the structure, the infrastructure of your workspace, also thinking about things like paper management. You know, if you're still dealing with paper in your workplace, what is your system for doing that? And at this point, if you're kind of having to admit, yes, I might be doing this for another six months or another year, and it, you, you've just got stacks of paper all over the place, that's probably not a sustainable organizational system. Um, some of that is coming to grips with whether you're a piler or a filer. Um, and, and that's a great differentiator right there. It really is. And so in embracing that, like there's not a right or a wrong way to do it. Mm -hmm. But if you're the kind of person who needs to see paper in order to you know, trigger your memory that you've got to take care of something, thinking about organizational systems that are going to still allow that to happen without it just becoming this giant stack on your desk where you, you've got to waste time going through it to find what's really important there. Um, you know, I love little just individual paper file boxes so you can sort and categorize things by project and label it so that you know, like, okay, now I'm working on this contract. I pull this box out. That's all my documentation that's related to that. I can go through that, see who signed what, you know, that type of thing. Um, but for other people, it might be just, I really need to go ahead and invest in a filing cabinet. Like I need some kind of drawer system to allow me to start filing paper that I might be managing for work. And I even though you say that, because I think there's a push in today's world. Like if you're not all electronic, there's something wrong with you. Sure. And, you know, I know sometimes, and I come from a tech background, so I love technology, but there are some things I need to have paper for. Sure. And I, I try and get rid of clutter and I'm getting more comfortable at doing some things electronic. But whenever I will share, you know, I'll go out and share a picture of something that I'm using to help organize paper, I get backlash from a lot of people of like, 
well, you sh that should be electronic. And I'm thinking, but if that's what works for me, and I love that you're telling people, you might need to go get a file cabinet. There's nothing wrong with that. If that's how you stay organized and that's that's a system that works for you. And I use a combination of both. I, I do some paper and I do some electronic. Yeah, and I think, you know, I know for me, if I'm editing something, I have to do that on, like I'm hey, an editor on paper. Then. And so I still print things, not, not a lot, but like, that's just how I think and I interact with information. So I think, okay, yeah, it's just embracing your own need to work in that way and, um, and being okay with that. No shame. Yeah. And I think someone shared this tip with me the other day. I thought it was really great. Um, we were talking about, you know, trying to figure out what you want in a good workspace. And I think right now you, you bring an excellent point. People just went into emergency mode. You set up shop on the dining room table, you grab what you needed and you, you've been in the weeds for so long, you probably haven't taken the time to step back and say, let me look, do I have what I need? Like this could be long-term. And people get stuck sometimes trying to figure out what they do need. That if you're kind of looking around going, I'm not sure what I need, a great place to start can be what don't I like? Like what isn't working for me? Because sometimes when we can say, okay, I don't have anywhere to put my paper, you know, I never seem to have the pens that I need. I don't have good lighting. By making that list, that can help you discover then on the opposite side, here is what I do need. So if you're struggling with that, I think sometimes figuring out what isn't working for you can help you define what you might be looking for in terms of a new setup and situation as well. Exactly. I mean, I would just say keep like for a week, have a piece of paper next to you. And every time something frustrates you in your workspace, jot it down and say, gosh, I, I, you know, my kids stole, stole all my favorite pens again, <laughs> you know, or I, I, I can't, I can't find a sticky note when I need to jot something down or, you know, just kind of keep up with those little things that frustrate you throughout the week and then say, all right, I can solve this problem. So um, I, I think just at this point, doing a full assessment of your workspace is, is really important, particularly if you know you're gonna be in this through summer or into the fall um, and, and recognize that you need to take care of yourself and, and treat yourself in this office space so you can maximize your productivity. Are there any tools that you recommend? I know I have some I like, but everybody's different. So I know you, you are gonna know about tools a lot more than I do. For people that are, you know, let's say during the day, your dining room is your office. And then at night it needs, your office now needs to get packed up because the family needs the space. What are some good, you know, tools without having to spend $20,000 on a home makeover for people to have kind of a portable, what I like to call a mobile office in their house that can be set up and bro broken down pretty easily? Yes. So, to, you know, I love just like a portable, either a caddy or a portable file box that you can just kind of stash your stuff in, but in an organized way. So things are still categorized and you can just take that and move it with you. I also love a three tiered rolling cart. That's okay. I'm so happy to hear you say that. That's my number one go to is get the three tier rolling yes. cart with the little, you can hang the cups off the side too. It's magnetic, you know, it's yes. metal. Yes. So it truly, it is one of my favorite organizing tools. You can use it, you know, when, when the pandemic is over, you can roll it into a bathroom and use it there. It can be great arts and crafts supplies for your kids. But I think it's a great tool just to give you that mobility. Um, again, you've got the three tiers. So you kind of have some built-in categorization. You yeah. could keep all your, you know, cords and charging things you need on one layer and you could keep paper and then supplies on another. It's just to me, it's a great solution and it gives you that mobility. So, and, and, you know, we talk about like setting boundaries between work and personal life. You could truly roll it into a closet over the weekend. So yeah. you're like, I want to put my work away. I want to walk away from my office. And now I'm having my family time I'm having my, my time to myself. And then you can wheel it back out on a Monday. So to me, it, anything on wheels is a great solution. I love that. And I mean, I'm, I'm always looking for new ones. I mean, you can, you can pop on Amazon. I've seen them as low as $20 now. And you know, the fancy, fancy ones are upwards of 50. So sure. it's not like you're gonna break the bank to go get, and then even like you said, the pandemic's over, you're gonna be able to repurpose that thing. You're yeah. probably gonna wanna get more. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> different places exactly. in your yes, it's cheaper than adding onto your house. That's yes. for sure. <laughs> yes, I love that. Um, one of the things we had to do, particularly when my daughter was home, you know, I. I'm sure this is no shocker. I have a pretty well organized office, but it took me a while to get here. But we now have uh, color coding. You can just do it with stickers of the, like scissors for whatever reason. 
my daughter will at any given time have every single pair of scissors in our home somewhere in her room between under her bed and her, I mean, if the scissors are gone, you know, she's taken them, but she's like, I don't have them. So we now finally got to where we put stickers on the pair of scissors for what belongs in what room. Yeah. And so when I come into my office, I can instantly see if mine are gone. Now, no one can pretend that, you know, I didn't, everybody owns their own pair. But exactly. even just the small investment of get duplicates of the things like that and label them. So exactly. Yes. Yeah. There are certain things that you should duplicate. Like it's great to have a, you know, a tape dispenser, a stapler, a pair of scissors, you know, these, these basic things that pack sticky notes in, in multiple rooms of the house. And especially now, because so many rooms are having to multi-function for us. So setting up little mini offices in various locations is a great idea. And again, not an not a major expense to do that. Yeah. So for people that, and this was, so the old me, I wish I keep saying, I'm going to bring my mom on the show. I need to bring my mom on the show. So I was a hoarder <laughs> like as a, as a younger child. Um, I didn't want to get rid of anything, which now is funny because now I'm the one that's constantly trying to get rid of stuff in our house. And my husband and daughter are kind of the hoarders. So for people that are on board with, okay, I've just created, you know, I've organized the junk drawer. Let's say even you're just starting with that. I know everybody gets rid of, yeah, I do that. But then three weeks later, it's a complete mess again. So what are some strategies or things people can think about to once they've gotten the space cleaned up and organized, how do you maintain it so that you're not right back where you were a couple of weeks later? Yeah, a couple of great strategies for that. You know, I think first of all, because we're all sharing our space with multiple people at this point, um, and it would be great if we could just put like saran wrap over it and just keep it exactly that way, but people touch it you know, is to have a conversation with everybody and just sort of say, you know, I want us to have more time to have fun together. And in order for us to do that, some of these systems, it, it's helpful if they stay in place, you know, things, things remain somewhat organized and, and just kind of get everybody on board with that. Labeling can be a really helpful way to, to maintain that. If you've got kids old enough that they can read, they can see that the label, you know, if they're helping to unpack the groceries, this is where things belong in the pantry. Or if you put things back in the drawer, this is where things belong. So making that really clear and communicating that to everybody as part of the same team can be really important. You know, I really stress for my clients that if you wanna maintain organization going forward, you need to create a one-in, one-out policy. So before you bring something into your home, you need to get rid of something else first. So that can apply to shoes. <laughs> Um, I was say, I don't, uh, Matt makes, but I will be honest, I do get rid of some. It's great. not necessarily one in, one out, but it is some in. So, so, so yeah. <laughs> it, it, but it is, you know, at people who love books, you know, I, I'm like, you, it really comes down to math. You have so many linear feet of bookshelf space. This is how many books you can have. You know, we're, we're going to try to avoid the double stacking on the bookshelf. So you really can't even see what's in the back. So if that is the case, then before you can go out and buy new books, you've got to get rid of a couple of books to make space for them and really applying that to everything. You know, if you're somebody who loves to buy gadgets for your kitchen, before you go out and buy something new, really look at and assess the ones you already have that you never use. You know, if this is just a big appliance that you never plug in, you haven't used in a year, it's probably time for that to go. So that one in one out policy can be really helpful. I also think just make it easy to let go of things. And that can be as simple as keeping a grocery bag at the bottom of your closet. So when you pull, pull something out and you're like, okay, this totally does not make me feel like a rock star, I'm getting rid of this. Or it's ripped or torn or needs to be repaired and I'm never gonna do that. Um, just let it go and make that as easy as possible. Um, keep a box in your garage for those you know, tools or household things that you're like, okay, I don't like the space anymore. It just needs to go. And then at least once a month, just, you know, think about where you're going. Where's the closest thrift store? Can you put that in your car and just get it out of here and be intentional about it? Um, so often I have clients that, you know, I'll go back to see them and they're like, oh, you know, there's four bags of stuff we were trying to get rid of. They're still in the back of my car. And so trying to make that a part of your routine to just let those things flow. You know, the things that are coming into the house at some point, they've got to flow and go back out and, and make that as easy as possible. And I think some of it too is just a time issue. It's just like building in that schedule of regular maintenance. Um, some things might just be five minutes every day. You just want to get your kitchen counter right. back to normal. 
you know, just like, okay, it's, it's just, let's, let's the mail that landed there, the thing I had to sign the, you know, the return from TJ Maxx or whatever, like these things that just land there at the end of the day, I want all of that cleared off five minutes max. Some things thing, be- I think we let it build up. Right. So then it becomes what looks like this unbearable project yeah. instead of creating a new routine of, okay, everybody for five minutes after dinner, mm-hmm. here are our assignments. We just go do that. Um, yeah. And for women in particular, I think we do that in our head, but then what we end up doing is we take it all on ourselves. Exactly. Yeah. So then the resentment builds up, then you have a day and it doesn't get done and it piles up. And then it, it does become too much because you're doing all of it. And I, I was guilty of that for years and the pandemic's been a really nice opportunity for me to look around and say, my daughter can be doing a lot of these things that I am doing for her out of habit, out of it's just easier. And so we've been learning to really shift some of that around now. And every night it's okay, before you are allowed to have dessert or whatever, these are the things that you are responsible for tidying up. I, I think that's not really- done you don't get and by this hour, sure. then that's it, you know? I think that's so important. And I also think it's it's helpful for us as, as moms to recognize that we're giving them life skills. Like these are things that they will not just apply to making our home life easier and, you know, better division of labor, but we're giving them life skills about things have a home that they go back to. Things have a structure. Systems that are in place have long-term benefits. And you think about that in the work world and how often that applies or in higher education, you know, so when you go off to school, you've got these life skills to manage your time, to manage your space, to be able to find what you need when you need it. I mean, this, this is, to me, if you really start to think of it as part of your parenting is handing these skills off to your children, it's so important. Let everybody have a laundry basket and turn up your family's favorite, like, you know, get jiggy with it song and say, (laughs) while this song is playing, everybody needs to pick up all their things and take them back to where they belong. And, And I think helping kids understand like things have a home that they go back to is so important and letting everybody be a part of that. It could turn out to really be a fun part of your evening. It really could. And I'm waiting for the fun to come in. (laughs) But I mean, I didn't get my daughter is I'm picking on her a little bit today, but, but it, I think God laughs when, you know, they give you the person that's going to shake you up the most. Uh, And so she is, I thought when she was much younger, she definitely had the tendencies of, of very cleanliness. And that seems to have gone way out the window, but even back to our simple scissors example, now, you know, she knows she has to ask to borrow mine. And if she comes in and says, can I borrow your scissors? Of course, it's so easy for me to say yes, but now my answer is, well, where are yours? Sure. I can't find them. I'm like, well, that's not my problem. Yeah. You can't have mine. Yes. And it's caused a lot of angst, but again, I'm trying to get, you know, starting somewhere with just the scissors have a home. You can pick where you want your home to be. I'm not going to tell you where it is. They're your craft supplies, but if you can't ever remember where you left them or put them back, I'm not going to let you keep grabbing mine. And it's been, you know, a battle, but I was like, we're going to start somewhere. (laughs) We're going to start with the dang scissors. Exactly. Well, and I think, you know, I, I talk to parents all the time. They're just like, oh, my kid's room is such a mess. And I'm like, we have to teach them how to do these things. These are not just innate skills that we're born with. If like, what does clean up your room mean? You know? It, that doesn't necessarily resonate with, with all kids. I think there are kids who have certain personalities that are more drawn to, you know, they're, they, they like structure, they like to know what to expect and things like that. But I do feel like these are life skills and we teach them this, but it also has implications down the road that will be really beneficial for them. Yeah. I love that. So, um, if there are any, last minute tips that you would give our listeners if they're looking around their home right now and saying, I'm ready to, I want to make a change. I want to feel more organized with my space. As they're looking around, what tips would you give them of like, here's where I would come in and start with you? You know, I think one of the, that's a hard question, but (laughs) I, I think one of the first questions I always ask is why do you want to get organized? Like, why is this important to you right now? And setting a really clear intention about that. Just, you know, just like any other big life change that you want to make, it's like, why do you want to do this? Because if you don't have that internal motivation of what the payoff is going to be for yourself, 
it can be really hard to get started and, and to stick with it. So I think setting that clear intention, um, writing it down someplace, if you journal, putting it on a sticky note and sticking it on your bathroom mirror, you know, I want to get and stay organized. So I have more time on the weekends to relax with my family, or, you know, I want to get and stay organized because I want to be able to have friends over spontaneously and not have to spend all day stressing about how my home looks. You know, what are our what, what's our intention and what's our motivation for doing this and making that really clear? And then I talk to my clients all the time about having an organizing mantra, like something that they say to themselves when they feel like they're hitting a roadblock or they're just stuck and they're just like, oh, I don't want to do this right now. It kind of circles back to that intention. Um, one of my very favorite clients was a, a retired psychiatrist. She was downsizing from about 4,800 square feet into 1,200 square feet. Oh so, my goodness. That's yeah. And so I, you know, I said, this is, this is math. For every four things you pick up, three have to go, essentially. And he had this little mantra that he always said that was, you know, I'm living in the present. I'm not living in the past. And he said it to himself over and over again as he was making these decisions about what he was going to keep and what he was going to let go of. And I do think for so many of us, it's sort of defining who are we right now and how does our stuff reflect that? You know, what are we doing in our lives right now that has meaning to us, that gives us purpose, that's really important? How do we feel about ourselves? And letting the things around us reflect that, not letting it be a whole bunch of stuff from our past that isn't who we are right now. You know, maybe we had an old hobby that we loved, but we don't do that anymore. And that might feel painful, but it's not who we are in the present. And that's okay to let those things go and to live in the moment that we're in right now. And so for me, like having that little mantra that you say to yourself is a great way of keeping you focused, keeping you motivated, helping you remember that intention and letting that sort of carry you through this year. So if that goal is to get more organized, getting really, really specific with yourself about what it's about and letting that be your driving force. Oh, that's so good. And you already, there's some things I know I'm holding on to. And as soon as you said that, I was like, I think I was holding on to it thinking, well, maybe in another 10 years, I'll get back to that. Well, then I can deal with that in 10 years. Like this is taking up so much space. Sure. Let it go. Just let it go. Yes. Um, that's a really good tip. Love it. So Perry, where can everybody connect with you? Because I love the fact that you're, you're providing organizing services virtually. So it doesn't have to be that you live in the greater you know, Raleigh, North Carolina area to get help from a professional organizer here. So where can people uh, connect with you and learn all about everything that you do? The best way is just through my website, which is neat dash or hyphen freak.com. And I, um, I just have a little contact me form on there. Just send me a quick note. If they specifically tell me they found, they, they met me through you, that would be fantastic just to put it in context. And um, I would be happy to connect with anyone and, and do a set up a zoom call. We can look at your space. It's amazing what you can do virtually. And one of the things I'll say about working virtually that I love is when I'm in someone's space working with them, I think it's really easy for the client to shift some of the responsibility to me, like I'm there to do the work. But when you're doing it virtually, you are doing the work. And I feel like when you are doing the organizing work yourself, you're taking control of it. It's your, you know, that that's coming from you. And, um, and I feel like having that ownership over it is really empowering for people. Oh, that's awesome. And I'll put a link um, in the show notes for those of you listening where you can go um, connect with Perry as well. Uh, thank you so much for giving us your time here today. You've got me inspired to go uh, tackle a few areas in my home that I know have been on my to-do list that again, I just love that timer. I can just start small. I don't have to create a whole weekend to go make that happen. So thank you so much. It's been such a pleasure. All right. Thank you so much.